Thank you for visiting our channel, Traveling with Dogs. My name is Freedom, and with my dogs, Pooperhead and Monkey, we will tell you everything you need to know to drive to Mexico legally with dogs and cats during COVID. In this photo, Monkey is on the left and Pooperhead is on the right. This information is for traveling with domestic pets only. Dogs and cats are considered domestic pets in Mexico. So if you have rabbits, snakes, ferrets, or other animals, you will have to contact the Mexican consulate directly. We are going to talk about the paperwork needed, driving in the roads, signs, Spanish, and housing recommendations. Please watch this video to the end where I'm gonna give you some important secret tips. Tips that you can learn from so you can learn from our mistakes, not your own. In order to keep these informative videos coming, please like, subscribe, and Ring that bell. First off, before we get into things, you need to note that guns, most weapons, and drugs are illegal in Mexico. Do not bring your gun, personal marijuana, not a pipe, even if it's for medicinal purposes. Mexico has recently passed a law for small amount personal use marijuana, but there is no clear legal statute for what is considered legal amount. Every cop is a different opinion. It's just not worth the risk to drive with it or carry it on your possession. Let's get started. Paperwork. This is what is required by law to drive into Mexico with your vehicle and pets. You will need a six month tourist visa known as an FMM. This is for all persons traveling and you may purchase it online. It must be stamped when you cross the border into Mexico, you get it stamped on the Mexico side. And when you leave Mexico, going back into the States, you get it stamped on the Mexican side, showing that you leave. There is a link below to apply online. A vehicle import permit, known as a TIP. You don't need this if you're traveling in the States of Baja, California and Sonora, but everywhere else in Mexico, you need a vehicle import permit, a TIP. You can also purchase this online but you need to do it at least two weeks before your trip. It must be stamped, like the FMM, must be stamped when you enter Mexico and when you leave Mexico. These are the obvious ones. You're gonna need a valid passport, a valid driver's license, and vehicle registration. Pretty self-explanatory. Pet records. You're going to need a signed letter or record book of your pet's vaccinations from your veterinarian. You're going to need car or vehicle insurance for Mexico. If your United States policy states they cover you in Mexico, don't believe them. Don't do it, don't trust it. Just get another policy specifically for Mexico. There are so many agencies online, so shop around, the prices vary widely. It's usually cheaper to buy insurance for the entire year rather than just a few weeks or months. Do a little shopping here. And this part suggested, it's not a requirement, Make several black and white copies of everything I have mentioned. Your passport, your driver's license, your FMM, everything I mentioned here. In Mexico, it's considered forgery to make color copies. So do everything in black and white. I suggest you make three copies of everything and put it in different parts of your car or vehicle so you have easy access if you need it. Driving. First rule, do not drive at night. I'm not talking about driving around the city. That's fine. I'm talking about highway driving between cities. Most highways don't have any lights. There are many, many hazards. Things like road construction. Then there's this, total road construction. Dirt road, in the middle of the highway. Look at that. Potholes. Cows, pedestrians, passing other vehicles, accidents. Holy shit. And speed bumps. Oh my god, the speed bumps. Bumps here. The speed bumps here are terrible. No signs, no nothing. If you don't know where they are, that one, there's lots of them too. 
no signs, no paintings, no warnings, just speed bump, middle of the road. You can be driving along at 60, 70 miles an hour and all of a sudden there's a speed bump. Crazy. This town I know because I came in, so I'm going back out the same town so I know where they're at. Wow. Keep your masks close and easily available. There are many unmarked checkpoints, so always put it on before you arrive. If it's a military or inspection checkpoint and you do not have your mask on, they will surely pull you over and search you and your vehicle. So keep those masks easily accessible. You will also need them for toll booths and hopefully not if you get pulled over by the police. Highway driving and passing. Hmm. Very different than the US. Most highways in Mexico have one or two lanes on your side of the road. If you have two lanes, the right lane is for driving normally and the left lane is for passing. You will see many signs telling you to keep right, which I'll explain later in the sign section. When it comes to passing, actual passing, it's completely different than in the United States. First of all, if you're behind a slow moving car or truck, they will signal left, which means it's clear for you to pass. They're not turning left, it's a signal for you to go ahead and pass. It's clear. The first time this happened to me, I actually slowed down, thinking they were turning left, and I followed them for about 40 minutes before I figured out what was happening. The first few times you experience actual passing, it will scare you. On a two lane road, one lane going each direction, they pass down the middle. Watch this first passing video. It's pretty scary here how they drive with traffic and changing lanes. Now watch, in the second video, as we all split the road. Four vehicles, two lanes, right down the middle. Checkpoints and toll booths, it's all about the masks. Make sure you have them on. There are lots of toll booths in Mexico and the prices vary dramatically. Always pay in pesos and count your change before you leave. Police. Ah, here's the negative part. The police are corrupt in Mexico and they want your money. The problem is that most of the time you're not even doing anything wrong and they pull you over for an excuse. Stop signs and speeding are the top two reasons you get pulled over. Stop signs are obvious because most of them are missing. Most of them aren't even marked. As a tourist, you have no idea where the stop signs are. And most of the time what the speed limit is, because you get off the highway, you go into a town, there's nothing's marked. So as a rule of thumb, when I get off the highway, I make sure I'm not the fastest car on the road and I go the same speed as all the rest of the traffic. And as far as stop signs, well, my best advice is to follow somebody. If they stop, you stop. At least if you get pulled over by the police, you could say, hey, I don't know my way around here. That car didn't stop, so I didn't stop either. There's no stop sign showing. If you do get pulled over and they ask for money, it's easiest to pay about one fifth of their asking price. Most workers in Mexico make very little money, even the police. So if they want a thousand pesos, offer them 200. They will gladly accept it. I know several people that travel to Mexico frequently. Everyone has a different experience. Some have never been pulled over in years, others many times in just a few days. Stay tuned for my secrets at the end of this video. Let's take a few moments and enjoy the diverse scenery of Mexico. It's seven degrees C out right now.
about a half hour out of Cabo. Everything's green, the sky's dark and black. There are many highway and road signs. I'm going to cover the most important and give you a few others that you will see frequently. I can't cover them all because there's just too many. First of all, everything is in metric. Meters for distance and height and kilometers for speed. Let's jump in. This one may be obvious, Alto. This is a stop sign in Mexico. But some of you may not know this if you haven't been there. Remember, stop signs are not always visible in Mexico. Sometimes they're not even there. No estacionarse. No parking. It's usually just a big letter E with a diagonal no through it. But sometimes you'll actually see the words no estacionarse. Topes. Speed bumps. This may be the most important of all. There are lots of speed bumps and many, many different types. And unfortunately, many times they're not marked. Or speed bumps. Now if you don't have enough speed bumps, there'll be more speed bump bumps. They really like speed bumps here. <laughs> One day, we were going down the highway, approaching a small town. We were slowing down for the town. There was a giant speed bump. It was not painted, and there were no signs. It was black, the same color as the road. We hit it at about 45 miles an hour. The dogs and everything in the car became airborne. Just as I was figuring out what happened and got control of the car, we had another one. Immediately after the second speed bump, I hit the brakes for a pedestrian walking across the road with three dogs. Of course, they weren't on leashes and weren't waiting for me at all. We then pulled over for about 15 minutes to let daddy relax. Another reason not to drive at night. Cruce de Escolares. School crossing usually means topes are coming, slow down, and be careful. Poblado Proximo, you are approaching a town. Probably going to be speed bumps. Curva Peligroso, dangerous curve. It's not like in the States. They mean it here, slow down and be careful. Desviación, detour. In my experience, it's because of road construction. Puesto de control militar. Military checkpoint. Put on those masks. Plaza de Cobro and Caseta de Cobro. Toll booth. Caseta de Cobro is most common, but you will see them both depending on where you're at in Mexico. Put on your masks. Un solo carril. Single lane ahead. Zona de descansa. Rest area. Returno means return or U-turn. You don't want to miss these. It may be a long way before you get another chance. Conserva su derecha. Keep to your right. I talked about this a little bit at the beginning. Two lanes. When you have two lanes going your direction, the right lane is for normal driving and the left lane is passing. That's all it means. It's a reminder. Stay in your right lane. Precaución un carril por sentido. Single lane ahead. Just means one lane in each direction. Si toma, no manaje. Don't drink and drive. Calzada principal, calle lateral. This is main road and side street. This is where, when you get mostly into a town, this is where you're gonna have your highway going down the middle and then your side roads, if you wanna turn into the town, you have to get off the highway onto the side road that parallels it and then you can turn left or right from that side road. This is sometimes very confusing for your GPS system. 
no rebase, no passing. It's usually just a picture of two cars with a diagonal line through it, but once in a while you'll see the words no rebase. Disminuya su velocidad. Reduce your speed. Principia tramo en reparación. Road construction ahead. That's not a direct translation, but is what it means to us. And finally, there is a fun one. I just call this Bizarre City Street Sign. Notice how it states airport, Guadalajara, the name of a community, and the hospital. But there's also Carl's Jr. and Tostadas? Housing! We did lots of camping. It's inexpensive and readily available. Camping, campsites, and RV locations run from 100 pesos to 400 pesos a night. There is a free app called iOverlander, which helps everything for the road warrior. It lists everything from camping to showers, pharmacies to veterinarians, toll booths to checkpoints, and everything in between. At the more expensive camping sites, over 250 pesos, check Airbnb and vacation rentals on Facebook. Many, many times it's cheaper to get a place than it is to stay at the campsite. There are also vacation rentals in Facebook groups. And the great thing about Facebook and campsites is that you can book most of these the day you arrive. We like to travel without a schedule since we like some cities and beaches more than others. This way we get to stay longer at the places we like and leave earlier at the places we don't like. It's not that we don't like the place, it's usually just there's weather involved or something comes up. When traveling with your pets, be prepared for a sudden change in plans. Things like no housing or no campsites, the pets get sick, weather, car trouble. We got a flat tire and dead battery on a brand new car. Of course, it helps to know the language of the country you are visiting, wherever that may be. Obviously, the language in Mexico is Spanish. Many Mexicans speak some English, but do not come to Mexico expecting them to speak English. If you don't already speak Spanish, do your best to learn as much as possible before you come. Google Translate is okay for single words, but it's not very accurate for phrases. For example, in English, if we were talking about work, we would say, when are your days off? But in Mexico, the phrase is, when is your day of rest? Google Translate would not recognize the difference and would make the translation literal. Spanish speakers will not understand you. With that said, Spanish is not an easy language to learn. It's the second fastest language in the world behind Japanese. But do your best and they will too. Wow! Lo viste? <laughs> Thank you for watching our video. Because you watched until the end, here are some secret tips while vacationing in Mexico. Tip number one, front license plate. Due to corrupt cops, I was pulled over many times simply because they looked at my front license plate while they were standing on the road, I was driving by, they just looked at my front license plate, saw my California plate, and waved me over. After I realized this, I removed my front license plate, and that problem went away. So, remove your front license plate before you come to Mexico. Tip number two, roll down your windows. When approaching checkpoints and inspection stations, roll down your windows so your pets can be seen. The great news is your pets. Your happy dogs are an asset when traveling in Mexico. When arriving to a military checkpoint, the usual questions are, where are you coming from and where are you going? But with Pooper Head and Monkey, they were more interested in what their names were and what their breed was. After they saw the dogs, we were rarely asked where we were going and we were never searched. Obviously, this tip will not work if you have yappy dogs or angry dogs. This only works with happy, obedient dogs. Tip number three, if you get pulled over, it's similar to tip number two. Roll down your windows. 
Every time I was pulled over, the cop walked up and told me to roll down the windows because of the dogs. They were afraid. I simply responded that it was too hot for the dogs to have the windows up. I also took photos. This is important. Take photos of the cop as he's walking up to you and while he's standing in your window and let him know you're taking the pictures. It makes them nervous. They all become frustrated and let me go. Tip number four, additional items for your pets. Besides the standard things like food, water, leash, toys, and the paperwork I told you about, bring extra medication like anti-diarrhea pills, anti-vomiting pills, and if your dogs like to swim, make sure you bring eardrops. You don't wanna waste your vacation going to a vet. And if you didn't know this, this is very important. Blowfish, also called pufferfish, are deadly for dogs and cats. One lick, even if they lick a dead pufferfish, and your pet will be dead in minutes. Unfortunately, this happened to a friend of mine in Mulahe. Tip number five, windshield video camera. Buy one of these and take it with you. Not only does it help if you have an accident, but if a cop stops you and states you ran a stop sign or says you were speeding, nah, you got proof you weren't. Show them you got a video camera. They'll leave you alone. It works great. And final tip number six, your paperwork. The one that I told you about in the beginning. The stuff you need legally. Never once in all of our travels where we ask for paperwork, passports, visa, or any identification other than a driver's license. I think this is because it's foreign. Except for the visa, everything's in English. So they don't know if your passport is expired or valid, much less your driver's license. So keep this in mind the next time someone tells you it's mandatory. I believe we gave you some very useful information in this video. So if you have not already, please like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Thank you for watching and enjoy Mexico. The people are fantastic and the food is even better. Happy travels.